salutation and praise, blessing and glory, rest upon that primal branch of the divine and sacred low tree, grown out, blessed, tender, verdant, and flourishing from the twin holy trees, the most wondrous, unique, and priceless pearl that doth gleam from out the twin surging seas. Behold, is the blessed and sacred bough that hath branched from out the twin holy trees, the priceless pearl that hath gleamed from out the twin surging seas. Well is it with him who seeketh the shelter of his shame that sheltereth all mankind. Shortly after the passing of Abdu'l-Bahá in 1921, it was announced to the Baha'i world that the faith had a guardian, a head to whom all Baha'is could turn. In his will and testament, the Master had recorded, O ye the faithful loved ones of Abdu'l-Bahá, it is incumbent upon you to take the greatest care of Shoghi Effendi. For he is, after Abdu Baha, the guardian of the cause of God. Just who was this Shoghi Effendi? And why had the Master singled him out to lead God's faith? Shoghi Effendi Rabbani was born in Abdu Baha's home also known as the House of Abdullah Pasha. He was born in this room on Sunday, March the 1st, 1897. His father was Mirza Hadi Sherazi, a relative of the Bab. His mother was Daya Khanum, the eldest daughter of Abdu Baha. Shoghi Effendi's grandmother was Munir Khanum, the wife of Abdu Baha. Together they had nine children, but only four survived to adulthood due to the pestilential atmosphere of Akka. The eldest was Shoghi Effendi's mother, Daiya. Next was Tuba, Ruha, and Manavar. Shoghi Effendi's aunts all broke the covenant. Shoghi Effendi had two brothers and two sisters. His brothers were Hussein and Riaz. His sisters were Ruhangis and Merhangis. Shoghi Effendi's siblings all broke the covenant. The years given in red are the dates that the guardian put them out of the faith. O oh God, this is a branch sprung from the tree of thy mercy. Through thy grace and bounty, enable him to grow, and through the showers of thy generosity, cause him to become a verdant, flourishing, blossoming, and fruitful branch. Gladden the eyes of his parents, and bestow upon him the name Shoghi, so that he may yearn for thy kingdom, and soar into the realms of the unseen. Shoghi means the one who longs. Effendi is the title of respect, like Sir or Mr. Rabani means divine. 
At the time of Shoghi Effendi's birth, Abdu'l-Bahá and his entire family were still prisoners of the Ottoman Empire under Sultan Abdul Hamid II. The earliest photograph of Shoghi Effendi shows immense eyes and a firm, beautifully shaped chin. Already one sees a sadness, a wistfulness, a haunting predilection for suffering that is like a shadow on the wall. Shoghi Effendi is pictured with one of the earliest pilgrim groups from the West. Helen Goodall and her daughter Ella Cooper give us an eyewitness account of an encounter between Shoghi Effendi and his cherished grandfather, Abdul Baha. The master was seated on the divan. Just then a small figure appeared in the open doorway. Having dropped off his shoes, he entered the room. The master beckoned him forward. He came, drawn as by an invisible thread, until he stood quite close in front of him. While we breathlessly watched to see what he would do, the little boy reached down, and picking up the hem of Abdu Baha's robe, he touched it reverently to his forehead, and kissed it, then gently replaced it, while never taking his eyes from the adored master's face. That special child could also be very playful. Much to the consternation of the pilgrims, Shoghi Effendi would dash up and down the steep flight of stairs that led to the upper story of the house, while he awaited the arrival of his beloved grandfather. The master penned him a note. Shoghi Effendi is a wise man, but he runs about very much. The master wrote, Oh, my Shogi, I have no time to talk. Leave me alone. You said, Write, I have written. What else should be done? Now is not the time for you to read and write. It is the time for jumping about and chanting, Oh, my God. Therefore memorize the prayers of the Blessed Beauty and chant them that I may hear them, because there is no time for anything else. Riyakonam tells us that in spite of his innately joyous nature, his sensitivity and his background, so different from that of others in every way, could not but set him apart and give rise to many of heartache. Indeed, he was one of those people whose open and innocent hearts, keen minds and affectionate natures, seem to combine to bring upon them more shocks and suffering in life than is the lot of most men. Shoghi Effendi became so unhappy at school, he would refuse to go. Abdul Baha entered Shoghi Effendi in the Syrian Protestant College in Beirut. When he finished, he had what was then equivalent to high school. Shoghi Effendi later went on to earn a Bachelor of Arts and Sciences at the American University of Beirut in 1918. Shoghi Effendi was an eyewitness to many moving and historic events in the progress of the cause. On March 21, 1909, he was present when Abdu'l Baha entombed the remains of the Bab. In God Passes By, Shoghi Effendi writes, When all was finished and the earthly remains of the martyr prophet of Shiraz were at long last safely deposited for their everlasting rest in the bosom of God's holy mountain, Abdul Baha, who had cast aside his turban, removed his shoes, and thrown off his cloak, bent low over the still open sarcophagus, his silver hair waving about his head, and his face transfigured and luminous, rested his forehead on the border of that wooden casket, and sobbing aloud, wept with such a weeping that all those who were present wept with him. Shoghi 